Greetings from Yates Chapel on the campus of Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm Joey Shelton, the Dean of the Chapel and Director of Church Relations here at Millsaps. And it is a great joy to be with you after our prolonged absence of the winter break, along with me being away last week. Today, I'm reminded of my former life as an attorney. I found myself in the courtroom quite a few times and the passage today is about a trial. And yet this trial took place 2,750 years ago and is still in process. Micah chapter six, beginning with verse one. Micah was a prophet, a prophet to the nation of Israel. And Micah was disturbed at what was going on with the nation. There was great economic disparity, unfair business practices. It's like the people had forgotten who they were and why they were set apart as God's people. And that was to be a light to all nations. They had begun this great dependence on military alliances and military spending for their protection. And they had forgotten that God is the source of all love and the source of all security. And Micah is setting out to remind the people, what is God's economy. God's economy, not a market economy. God's economy, an economy of grace. Here are these words from Micah, beginning with chapter 1, verse 6. And we're going to break it down into three parts today. And our reflection will be on a redefinition of household a redefinition of household, an expanded notion of what your and my household includes and what is the economy of our household. So here we begin. Hear what the Lord says. This is Micah saying this. Hear what the Lord says. And then we enter into his prophetic voice as speaking for God. Rise, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you mountains, the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth for the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will contend with Israel. In other words, God has chosen as the jury the mountains and the hills, the foundations of the earth, the mountains which have looked over humanity from its very beginning, the mountains and the hills which were created by God just as people were created by God. These mountains, these parts of creation, these hills, these foundations are actually the jury. They've witnessed it all. Oh, my people, God speaks, for God is the prosecutor. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what way have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised? What Balaam, son of Bear, answered him? 
and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal and that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. In other words, God is reminding the people that God is a God of love, God, a God of rescue, a God of salvation, a God, a God who desires good for all the people of Israel, all the people of Israel. He has brought them out of this household of Egypt that is a household of slavery, of oppression, of bondage, of violence. Moses, the lawgiver, Aaron, the mouthpiece, Miriam, the leader of worship, were provided to the people in their times of need in Israel, in the, in the wilderness. And, and, and then God even reminds them of this foreign prophet who is trying to curse Israel and God defeats this prophet through the mouth of a donkey. These great acts of dividing the sea, of dividing the Jordan River, of providing the opportunity for the entire household to go into the promised land. And God reminds them of this goodness and that God can be counted on. And then we pick up with verse six. And this is Israel's response. Well, well, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? <laughs> They're kind of being smart, Alex. They're reminding God, oh, God, we've always worshiped you. Why, we are people who are sacrificial people. So what do you want from us? You want more calves that are a year old? And then they start exaggerating. You want rams, thousands of them, 10 thousands of rivers of oil? Do you want us to sacrifice our firstborn to you? God has already told them that is not Acceptable. That is not what God wants. And so now, Micah. Micah speaks and reminds the people that it is not worship. This false worship of this showing of piety and ceremony. That's not what God desires. Hear Micah. He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So here's where the whole economy of the household comes in. Because the word here, justice, it's the justice of the household. It's, it's, it's the mesh pot. And the Hebrews understood this as equal access to the goods and services of society for all of its members. Equal access, those things that they did not have in the household of Egypt. Israel is supposed to provide this access. You know, I, I remember John Perkins speaking one day and, and he said, you know, people say if you give somebody a fish, you have fed them for a meal. And if you teach somebody to fish, you fed them for a lifetime. And he followed that up and said, but once you teach someone to fish, they have to have access to the bait, to the rod, the reel, the equipment, and they have to have access to the pond. 
And the the powers that be in Israel were denying access to the very people that God had said, no more poverty, No, no more developing systems that oppress people. I don't even want you to charge interest because interest leads to slavery. I want you to do this kind of justice, to have a system based on my logic, God says, my logic of grace and love for the entire household. To do this type justice and to love kindness, hased, a tough word to interpret, kindness, Mercy is that all encompassing love of God for God's people, for you and for me, for all of the household of God, for everyone that the mountains look upon and the hills look upon. It's an unbreakable love of God for God's creation. And to walk humbly with your God. This humility is is also translated as steadfastness. Steadiness. To walk with God in the steadiness of doing justice and, and, and loving mercy and loving kindness and developing a system, a household in which everyone has access. <laughs> These are crazy words in this market economy of ours that's based on the logic of the market, not the logic of grace. It's based on winners and losers. And we as the church operate the way that society has been set up. And if you think that it's, it's a difficult process to enter into this economy of God that is an economy of grace, well, just look at where we are right now in this economy that's of twisted logic, of veiled justice, liberty and justice for all. I can tell you, our system needs some help. Our faith leaders, myself included, we need some help. Our politicians need some help. Our people in the pews need some help. We all need to be reminded what it really means to do justice, to love God's mercy, God's goodness, God's kindness, and to walk humbly and steadfastly with our God so that our creed, who we say we are as followers of Jesus Christ, as people of God, of the one who has come and given us everything and told us that loving God back with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength is loving our neighbor, our household, regardless of what they look like or who they are, our neighbor, the person in our path of loving them as we love ourselves. I guess I mention that every time that I do a reflection or I preach to remind myself, what does it really mean to be a disciple? So my prayer for myself and for all of you in this new year is for us to not only ponder, but to participate in doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with our God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.